Hey, what's up? My name is Kun. I'm the keyboard player for Epica, and you're listening to MetalStorm.net. Awesome! You're in the States since the release of your new album. Uh, what true. is the fan reaction? Actually, it's pretty good. We uh, were a little bit afraid. Um, not of the reaction of the fans, but on the turnouts. Pre-sales could have been better, you know, because Nightwish toured the States a month ago. But actually it's turning out pretty well. We have a lot of walk-ups and uh, every night we have a big party. Yeah. No, really. It's awesome. Um, how many new songs do you play on this tour? We are playing four or five new songs each night. Uh, depends on what we want to play, but you know, we have uh, a, lot, a lot of... The more albums you bring out, the more other songs you have to play too, so it's really getting hard to make a good set list, but you know, we try to uh, have a balanced set with uh, songs from every album and also a few new songs, of course. Uh, you're playing in Australia for the first time next, yeah, year. next year. Why did it take so long for Epica to play there and is there any other countries that you guys would like to conquer? Well, uh, we would like to conquer every country. And we're uh, halfway, I guess. No, but uh, I don't know why, why it took so long to go to Australia. Probably uh, there wasn't much interest in us over there. Um, it's hard, you know, to get, to get into a new country for a band. Uh, people have to know your music, you have to be uh, distributed there. But somehow we got an offer and uh, we got three shows uh, confirmed and we worked on some more shows on the East Coast. So, uh, no, it's actually on the West Coast. We play on the East Coast, maybe do some shows on the West Coast. Probably, you know, try to do some Asia as well during that period. While we're in the neighborhood. <laughs> At least the neighborhood. Other than Simone, who else would you call an awesome front woman? Oh, there are a lot. Um, Christina from the Kunakoil uh, floor from Revamp, which is now, you know, she's uh, doing a great job with Nightwish, and, uh, yeah, uh, Shawon from Intentation, you name them all, you know, it's, uh, if you have the presence and power to front a male world, so to speak, the male world, then I think you have enough power to be uh, an awesome singer. You know, I'm, I'm used to it because uh, I've been working with Simone for 10 years now and it's, it's great, so I don't, see, I don't really see it as a male-driven world, you know. There are a lot of guys trying to be tough and be metal, but you know, as you can see also with System Divide, they have a girl singer. It works, you know, it doesn't really necessarily have to be all male bands to be cool, I guess. So. It's your special project plan for your 10th year anniversary. Uh, tell us briefly a little bit about it. Uh, well, it's our 10th anniversary show, we're going to do great stuff, we're, we're planning it right now. And it's going to be on the 23rd of March, 2013, in Eindhoven, in the Klokgebouw. You can find everything you want to know on uh, our website, epica.nl. But uh, we're going to do a show with full orchestra and choir, 70-piece orchestra and choir, so it's, you know, just how our, our music should sound, we're going to do it there. It's gonna be a big stage, a lot of specials. We're gonna make the biggest show we ever did. So if you wanna see it, get your tickets. Because it's gonna be a sold out show for sure. Are you guys gonna record that for an upcoming DVD? Um, we would like to, but uh, you know, it's, it's, we, we have to depend on uh, certain factors if we will be able to record and release it. So hopefully, you know, we can do it, but uh, for now it's not yet planned. Uh, now that one, that one of your founding members left, your bass player, um, uh, do you believe this will influence the sound of Epica? Of course. Um, even if, you know, ev with every band member you, you lose, you get a new one, which brings in other influences and other musical styles. And, uh, you know, Rob is a totally different bass player than Eve. Um, so probably when he is joining, joining us to write music it's going to be different and uh, but hopefully it's you know probably it's going to be for the good because we selected Rob on his skills and his uh, ability to, to play music. Now you guys knew him before because of Mayan? Yes. Um, 
was it your first choice period or was there a tryout per se? Uh, no, uh, well actually we knew Rob uh, way longer, way before, you know, from when he was in uh, uh, Suncage, we did some shows together uh, on festivals and you get to know each other and we, he was in Delane, which is also a female funded band, so you know, you're always in the same area. And Rob played with Mayan and uh, there was no choice, uh, we would just, we hired him, actually a week later he was on stage with us, we never did any rehearsals and he just got it, nailed it, you know, so then you know it's a good, it's a, it was a good choice. Uh, the new album is also the first album where Isaac was a little bit more involved in, in far as composing the guitarist and stuff like that. Yeah. Um, and again, will that stick with the writing style with Africa? Will you continue with that? Uh, as long as Isaac is, keeps on writing music, uh, yes, of course. Yeah. And, and speaking of that, I mean, you all live in different parts of Europe. Um, how is a typical Epica song done? Pro Tools, Dropbox, Skype, or...? Yeah, uh, email. Email uh, sequencers uh, just throw ideas at each other and uh, work, at, work on it. And in, you know, only in the end we come together and work on details. And, now, how do you personally approach the keys, uh, uh, the choir, the orchestral elements that go into the album? Do you have to first hear all of the other music and be in the right mood of the album, or how do you approach that? Um, for the choirs, you know, I, I actually use the writing style I use from the beginning. Uh, it's basically the, the rules of the uh, old classics. So it's not, it's not really hard and somehow you know I, I got, got more uh, experience in writing so it goes faster and I, I can I sometimes experience with new stuff which also goes faster and which works. Sometimes it didn't, doesn't work. But, you know it becomes more and more easy because you, we've been around for 10 years now and, and everybody knows what to expect from me and I know what I have to do. But the same with the orchestrations or with the piano uh, parts, which I have to play. It's actually, they, they all let me do my thing. They basically don't even uh, need to hear it anymore because they know it will be okay. And uh, so far, I haven't let anyone down yet, I believe. <laughs> do you sometimes feel adventurous and say, ooh, let me try that? Or? Yeah, of course. Yeah, we did, uh, especially for the latest album, uh, I tried some... Uh, different stuff on the last song, you know, a little bit more musically uh, choir, not really the, the orchestration, but the, the sound. And we tried some uh, special, uh, yeah, special uh, sound for, yeah, for, the, for the voice, which I think works out pretty well, because the atmosphere in that part, it's a little bit that Arabic sounding part in the middle of the song. It really sounds good. It turned out to be great. Yeah. Cool. And I mean, I know that you cannot speak for Simone or Mark, but uh, when they write the lyrics, do you know if they write it on the road and make little notes, or is that all done once? Uh, no, they, they, that's also a process. They write lyrics. Mark, for instance, writes about, you know, uh, 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 how do you say it in English? Uh, hot topics, you know? Uh -huh. like, uh, Current affairs. Yeah. And um, I know he has like a, a file on his computer where he writes stuff down and when he get, gets new lyrics or new words he just adds it. And, and you know after, after the songs are written you're gonna try to fit the lyrics into the songs. It's also a process. So. Now you guys have been around like I said for 10 years. Is there tips that you can share with other new upcoming bands how to survive the road? Um, Mentally and physically? Well, first of all, you have to uh, work hard. We see, you know, I have seen a lot of bands that are just there to party and, and just, you know, drink themselves to death almost. Be just because they can, because they're rock stars, but it doesn't work like that, I guess. There's also, uh, it's, it's, I think it's, in this time period, it's harder to become really successful since Facebook and uh, internet is so open that everybody has the possibility to make a band and distribute their music. Yeah. So it's also really hard to get your music to the people. We are, uh, luckily, we, we, you know, we were there in time to become this big as we are now. But it's also because we work very hard. We play very 
too much live. You know, a lot of shows we uh, we have done, and uh, you have to treat your band as a company. make the right choices. Yeah, cool. Work hard and practice hard. Be a good musician. It's very important. There you go. Uh, what's next for Africa after this tour, other than Australia? Well, first we have to we going to do a UK tour. Uh, for one and a half week, we do some UK shows and two in France and one in Switzerland. Right after this American tour? Yeah, we have like one and a half weeks off. You know, see the see the missus at home and then uh, <laughs> go again. Uh, then we have, uh, you know, we're gonna probably have a lot of time to uh, prepare the 10th anniversary show on the 23rd of March. So we need some time off to practice with the, with the choir and the orchestra. It's going to be a busy time for us. And after that we go to Australia and then it's already summer fests again. And so do you already have some uh, summer festivals confirmed that you can talk about? Uh, we have some confirmed but I, I cannot speak about it yet. <laughs> but you know, it's you know, European summer fest. Right. And then again, you know, we may, might end up in the studio uh, after the summer. I don't know. We'll record a new album. There you go. Uh, famous last words to your fans. Oh, I hope it... These aren't my last words to the fans. But anyway, thanks for watching and listening. Thanks for showing up at the shows, this American tour. And we hope to see you a lot more times. If the world doesn't end in December. You never know. <laughs> thanks.